much. Wonderful to be probably the most pro-military city in America, San Diego. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you. Now it's after Memorial Day, so now all the zonies are coming over, and I want you to be nice to them for a change now. When you see them driving on the wrong side of the street, don't say anything, okay? Very glad you're here. And by the way, send back Arizona's water you've stolen. Too. <laughs> Nick, I want to say great job, great job, uh, really uh, remarkable and moving. Thank you. It's a tough act to follow. Um, you know, veterans like to take a few digs at each other now and then, and on occasion I have mentioned that when I graduated from the Naval Academy, I, I tried to get into the Marine Corps, but my parents were married. And uh, so I, uh, I used to. I used to tell that fairly often until I had a son in the Marine Corps, also in the 1st Marine Division, who once informed me that he said, Dad, he said, oh, he's playing the time was late yesterday, but four hours. He said, Dad, the Marine Corps is part of the Navy Department, the Men's Department. So I'm not sure if that's true. Thank all of you for being here, and I especially am honored to be on the same stage with a great friend, a great man, a great governor, and a man who I believe is fully qualified to be Commander in Chief Governor Matt Damon. Very we're very grateful that Mid is here. He believes. He believes in American exceptionalism. He believes that the 21st century will also be an American century. And I am confident of his leadership, and I know of his support for veterans and their families. You know, in my youth, I observed Memorial Day, as many Americans will today, as the unofficial beginning of summer, and a good day weather permitting for outdoor recreation. They often work to play golf and softball, go fishing, hike, have picnics, head to the beach. However, I have found that the older I become, I have the more meaning Memorial Day holds. Whether you've served in uniform or not, Memorial Day is a time for retrospection and appreciation of the sacrifices made on our behalf. In addition to picnics and celebrations, Cemeteries all over the country this weekend, buglers will sound taps to remind us of the sacrifices the day is intended to commemorate. At Arlington National Cemetery, soldiers from the 3rd U.S. Infantry Brigade will place a small American flag at the headstone of more than a quarter million graves, headstones that bear names of every ethnic origin that mark final resting places of professional soldiers and conscripts, rich and poor, Christian, Jew, and Muslims, believer and non-believer, dark-skinned and white, city dwellers and people from small towns and rural communities, teachers and machinists, day laborers, and presidents. Families in every place in America have a relative of connects each of these men and women who are interred at Arlington and with our fellow veterans resting in all our cemeteries and in foreign fields around the world. They loved our country and risked everything to defend it. 
at Gettysburg, Bellawood, Wood, Iwo Jima and Midway, Normandy and the Ardennes Forest, the Chosin Reservoir, Quezon and the Idrang Valley, Kandahar, and Fallujah. All these battles, all these grim tests of courage and character, made a legend of the combat veterans' devotion to duty in every community in America. It's a lesson in courage and patriotism that helps instruct those who defend our country today in their duty. And it instructs those of us who won't have the privilege and the burden of bearing arms for our country. Our country doesn't depend on the heroism of every citizen. But all of us should be worthy of the sacrifices made on our behalf. We have to love our freedom, not just for the private opportunities it provides, but for the goodness it makes possible. We have to love it as much, even if not as heroically, as the brave Americans who defend us at the risk and often the cost of their lives. We must love it enough to argue about it and to work together to serve its interests in whatever way our abilities permit and our conscience requires, whether it calls us to arms or altruism or to politics. You know as well as I, the world we live in is an uncertain one. It holds dangers for us and for everyone for whom freedom is the habit of the heart. Man's inhumanity to man is an evil never be entirely extinct. No matter how long a peace endures, it is always temporary. Americans will always be asked again to bear burdens that only the brave can endure. That burden will be their honor, as it once was ours. But it is a better world than our fathers inherited and their fathers before them. A world purchased at great and terrible cost by sacrifices on killing grounds that are now green fields and quiet beaches and peaceful corners of the world. We should be proud of what they did, proud and humble. Humble in the knowledge that we enjoy our freedom because of the devotion of Americans who sacrificed greatly to serve the to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, those Americans for whom duty, honor, their comrades, and love of country were more dear to them than life itself. When the time came for them to answer their country's call and fight on a field they did not know, they came. And on small islands, dense jungles, and mountainsides, in the air and on and below the water. They served well the country that sent them there. In the fog of hard battles won and lost, they held high a lantern of courage and faith that illuminated the way home. Or not. History does not remember all of them as individuals. We don't even know where they all rest, but we must not forget what they did. Their honor is eternal and will live in our country for so long as she remains worthy of their sacrifice. They were family and friends to some, heroes to us all, who lived, fought, and died for the safety and future of a great and good nation. God bless them and grant them perpetual peace.